Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. In today's video, we're going to have a look at how we can do a simple Node.js setup using Express. We're going to set up or CSS, JavaScript and images. And on top of that, we will render our pages with EJS. And before we get started, don't forget to smash the like, comment below if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Hello and welcome everybody. Let's get started by building our project. The first thing that we need to do is create a folder. You can create it on your desktop if you like. Give your folder a name. For example, my folder name is called Node.js Tutorial. Inside this folder is where we'll be building our project. And let's open the PowerShell or Terminal if you're Mac inside this folder. So on Windows, it's fairly easy. We can left shift, right click and open PowerShell Windows here. But on Mac, I believe that you're going to have to CD to this folder so we can start working on our project. The first thing that we need to do is set up our server. Uh, to do this, we need to create a package.json file in our root folder. And this package.json file holds various metadata relevant to the project and it's used to give information to NPM that allows to identify the project as well as handle dependencies. So now that we are in the root folder of this project, to initialize the package.json file, all we have to do is npm in it just like this. This will lead us through a couple of questions. And the first thing that we need to do is give our package a name. So I'm just going to call this Node.js tutorial. I'll just call it Node.js tutorial like this and press enter. The second thing that we need to do is add version, but if you press enter, this will just use the default version, which is 1.0.0. Then we can add a description. So Node.js tutorial. Then we can add an entry point. Let's press enter for now. Test command, let's press enter for now, git repository, and we can just skip the rest of the stuff. Once we are done, this will say, is this okay? Let's type yes to agree, and we should be good to go. As you can see, inside our folder, we now have package.json file, and let's open that with a code editor. And for me, I'm just going to open this with Visual Studio Code. So in PowerShell, I can actually just do code and then dot, and that should open the project for me, just like this. But if you're on Mac, you can simply go to File, Open Folder, and just navigate to the folder. So let's open package.json and have a look at what's going on. So as you can see, this has generated a few things for us. And as we're building the project and adding dependencies, the metadata for the dependencies will automatically be added to this package.json, which I will show you in a second. The next thing that I want to do is install Express and EJS. Express is a web application framework for Node.js that is designed for building web applications and APIs. And EJS is a simple templating language that lets you generate HTML markup with plain JavaScript. And alternative to EJS is Pug, which you can have a look at. It's spelled P-U-G. And to install both of them, we can actually use the terminal inside Visual Studio Code just because it's easier. So let's go to Terminal and start a new terminal, which will open here at the bottom. But of course, you can use PowerShell or the terminal on Mac. So let's start by installing Express and EJS. And let's have a look at what happens to a package.json file. To install Express and EJS, we can actually do this on one line. So we can do npm install. And we can install Express together with EJS. So let's press Enter. And as you can see, this has added two dependencies, EJS and Express. The next thing that we need to do is install Node1. Node1 is basically a tool that helps develop Node.js based application by automatically restarting the Node application when the file changes in the directory are detected. To install Node.mon, we can simply do npm install 
nodemon and then dash dash save dev. Let's install nodemon as well. As you can see, Nodemon was added here as dev dependencies. And now let's have a look how we can organize our project and create some of the files and folders. So let's drag this down because we won't need so much of it. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better, just like this. As you can see, the Node.js modules were added automatically. And there is a lot of modules that you can use, but I won't go through this right now let's start by creating our first folder and this folder will be called public and basically this folder will hold our css javascript and images so let's do three more folders inside here so let's do css let's do js let's add another one for images img for images for now let's create an empty css file so let's do main.css let's add an image in here so i'm going to go to the folder go to public images and i'm just going to paste an image from unsplash.com let's go back minimize this minimize the css and for js i'm just going to leave this empty and for the javascript i'm just going to leave this empty let's close the public folder and create another folder and the other folder will be called views and this is where all pages will be stored so let's create two example two example pages and we can create index.html page and we can create about.html page as well and later on i will convert those two pages to .ejs so i can show you how to do both now let's minimize this and the last document that we need to create is our app document. So let's create a new file in here and just call it app.js. Now, before we're able to run our project with Nodemon, which will refresh the project on any changes, uh, we need to go back to the package.json. And inside here, inside script, we have to add comma and we have to add start. And then we have to point to a file app.js. But before this, we need to add the nodemon, just like this, and app.js. Okay, before we run our application, let's go back to app.js and import express, which we installed earlier, and also let's set a port for application. To do this, let's comment in here, let's add import. And to import express, we can simply do const express equals require. And then we need to require express, just like this. The next thing that we need to do is set a variable name app to be equals express, just like this. And now we should be able to use express and set or listen import. Let's create another variable. So we can do port and the port will be equals 3000 or you can have 5000. And now we need to tell Node to listen on that port. Let's add another comment in here. Listen on port 3000. Then uh, to do this, we can do app.listen and then we can just simply add the variable name here, port. And this should now work, but to make it look a little bit nicer, let's display a message in the console here. Console info. The console info will be something like listening on port, and then we can add the variable. Technically speaking, if we save this now and run npm start, This should start the project for us. And as you can see, Nodemon started the app.js and we are listening on port 3000. So to open our project, we need to go back to, we need to go in the browser. We need to do localhost 3000. If you get this message, cannot get slash, that means that everything is working correctly. So let's go back to a project and set a few more things up. So first of all, let's make some space 
I want to add a few static files and this will be our CSS, JavaScript and images. So this will allow us to easily access this public folder, then the CSS, images and JS, which I will show you in a second. So let's do that first of all. And for the static files, we can do app.use and then we can use express dot static. And then we need to pass the name of the folder, which in this case is public. Once we're done here, we can do app.use and then we can specify the CSS folder, which is slash CSS. So public then slash CSS. Then we can do express dot static. And we need to do underscore underscore the name plus public slash CSS. I will show you how this works in a second. And as you saw, when I saved the Nodemon restarted the application for us, which is great. And then let's duplicate that two more times. And the second one will be for or JS, JavaScript. And of course, we need to change the name here. And the third one will be for Im or images. And then we can change the folder in here as well. Let's leave this for now. And let's now concentrate on the views. So first of all, let's have a look at how we can display the index.html and the about.html. And then I actually want to convert them to EJS and I will show you how to do that as well and display the EJS files. So first of all, to display the index.html, we can simply do app.get. We can leave this as empty. Then we need to do request and then response inside here we need to do get the response and send file underscore underscore dear name plus and now we need to navigate to views and then index.html so let's do slash views slash index.html save this and refresh you'll see that we're not getting anything so far and this is because our html page is empty so let's go back to our index.html and put some dummy information so i'm going to create a very simple html and inside here i will put hello well just like this save this page go back to localhost 3000 refresh and as you can see we're getting hello world the other thing that we can do we can go back and instead of send file we can do send and we can send uh, some sort of a string here. So let's say hello world again and send this to the page. If we save this, you will see that we are getting the hello world. And of course, let's change it to hello world one, two, three, just so you can see the difference. So we're getting hello world one, two, three. Now let's have a look at how we can convert those two pages to EJS and display them. First of all, let's rename the index.html to index.ejs. And we can do the same for the HTML here with about, so EJS like this. And now let's go back to application and set the views for EJS. So we can do set views and inside here we can do app.set views, which is the folder here. Then we can do dot slash views. And after this, we need to set the view engine, which will be app.set. And the view engine will be obviously EJS in this example. So let's save this. Now instead of send or send file, let's do render. And for the render, now we don't have to actually write the whole file name. We can actually just write index just like this. Save, go back to our browser, refresh. And as you can see, we're, we're getting hello world. And let me also show you how we can use EJS as a templating engine. And to do this, let's pass a variable in, inside here. Let's do a text variable and we can say this is EJS or something like this. Save this. Let's go back to index.ejs. And inside here, let's create h2. And, and for EJS, we're going to have to do this syntax here. So we'll open our percentage sign equals and then we usually close it with percentage sign and then close the arrow 
And obviously inside here is where we'll be passing our variable. So let's just put text just like this and save. So let's go back to the browser and hopefully we should be getting this is EJS, which is great. Let's now have a look at how we can do the about page. The way I want to make the about page work is by doing slash about. And as you can see, currently it's not working, so let's make it work. We can go back to about to app JS. For the about page, we can do exactly the same thing as here. So let's close the other pages as we won't need them anymore. And let's copy this, paste it in here. And because this is and because the index is in the root of our document, we don't need to specify the exact path. But for the about, we need to specify it like this. So I want about to be accessible by slash about and then we need to render the about EJS page and let's change the text this time to be to be something like about page and let's see how we can display this. So let's open about EJS. Let's create an HTML5 document again. Inside the title we'll put about and Let's give it a title of H1 and inside the H1 we're going to open and close EJS just like this and we're going to pass the text variable. So let's save this, refresh and we can see the about page. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is the static files that we added earlier. What we can do on the index.html page, so let's add a link in here. And instead of going to public CSS, main CSS, we can now do CSS slash main.css. To see whether this is working, let's open the CSS and add a quick rule. So body, we can add background color and we can just put it as aqua. Save this, go back to a project, refresh. And as you can see, the CSS is working and this also works for the JavaScript images and so on. So for example, if I wanted to add an image to this page, let's tidy this up a little bit and add an image. Source, instead of the source being public, then image, then the image source, which is cat.jpg. Now we can simply do IMG, which stands for image, and then cat.jpg, give it an old tag with cat and save. So let's go back to a project, refresh, and as you can see, we're getting the picture of the cat, which is awesome. Obviously, if you want to add a link to the about page, we can simply do, let's first of all remove the background. We can simply add a link in here, so I can do a href slash about, like this, about page, save, go back, refresh, and I think the link is down here below. So let's click on the about page. And as you can see, we're getting the about page and we can do the same here. Before we finish with this, I just wanted to let you know that I'm writing an article on this topic and you can simply follow this article to create your package JSON file, install your dependencies, install Nodemon, see the project folder, uh, how to run your application, uh, how to start it, how to add your static files, how to set up your views with EJS, uh, how to write, render pages and so on. So basically it's all in here if you wish to follow along and copy and paste some of the commands. And that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video.